Hooked up. The United States needs more fish production within its borders. We have more than a $9 billion seafood trade deficit in this country, second only to oil as a natural trade deficit. Most people don't realize that. We, ate, we import more than 84% of our seafood into this country. We need to be able to grow more seafood here. The fact that we're growing our caviar or our sturgeon in a recirculated system 17 miles inland from the coast uh, in a high technology environment but yet can uh, be uh, accepted by one of the world premier caviar houses such as Petrosian means a lot to us and it, it, it just helps validate the process that in fact world-class product can be produced out of a recirculated aquaculture system. Well, my name is Jim Michaels. I'm program manager for the Moat Marine Laboratory Sturgeon Program. Moat Marine Laboratory has been looking at aquaculture for more than a decade, and, and they decided early on that Sturgeon as a group of species was one of, the, one of the groups that was in trouble around the world and needed help, uh, so they started concentrating on sturgeon. Uh, the fact that sturgeon as a species produces caviar presented an opportunity with the revenue coming in from caviar that it could be a candidate species for this type of research. It's natural to find a fish or a product that you can grow that has a high revenue, potential revenue. So Moat put the two together and decided sturgeon was the great candidate for this recirculated aquaculture technology. All right, let's see what we can do here. It's just, I don't want to get one too big. Right, here we go. So that's the Siberian sturgeon. It's got what look like little whiskers. And those are actually what they smell and taste with. They're called barbels. Okay, so you're in the, the moat sturgeon hatchery. This is where the juveniles reside for a period of time. Uh, we actually hatch the fish in another room uh, that's shut down right now because we have no eggs incubating. But if we did, we would hatch them in another room and grow the fish up tall, maybe uh, a few inches in size and then we would stock them into tanks as you see behind me and as the fish would grow they would move their way well with our help up the line uh, into the tanks to uh, to the other end no stress they have no predators nothing to worry about all they got to do is swim around and about every 30 minutes have some food and enjoy their enjoy their meals here we'll grow them for five to seven years and they'll get up to maybe 20 or 25 pounds and, and three, three and a half foot long. We chose Siberian sturgeon, which is somewhat unusual to grow in Florida, but the reality is that Siberian sturgeon has the capabilities of handling the water temperatures that we would see here in Florida in these engineered buildings and uh, that's somewhat unique. Many of the other sturgeon species don't have the capability to go as high in temperature as the Siberian sturgeon does. In order to have sustainable, eco-friendly systems, if you want to grow fish without using a lot of water, you have to have filters. And these are some of our filters. This is the life support of what is supporting the fish that are in the tanks on the other side of the wall. If we didn't have this, we would have to have probably a hundred times as much water as we do. This is the only facility that exists with this technology right now. We probably have in excess of 75,000 square foot of, uh, of buildings that we're culturing these fish in. We have over 170 metric tons swimming at any one time and that allows us to produce meat, uh, surgeon meat on a weekly basis that we ship all over the eastern United States and to produce caviar at least four times a year that we then in turn ship uh, to the four corners of the United States. As, as we progress, our production of caviar goes up, our production of meat goes up. Uh, this past year, we produced almost a metric ton of caviar. We expect to produce over two metric tons next year. 
We have always had a goal that we want to produce the best product that we can, a world-class product that can compete on a world market, and we've been very pleased that we've been able to do that. This is one of our larger grow-out buildings for our production. These are much larger tanks in here, and therefore the fish are larger. Uh, each of these tanks is almost 20,000 gallons, so it's the size of a, at least a small swimming pool. They're about five foot deep. They go quite a bit below ground level. And uh, we have lots of fish in here. If you come over, you'll see some of the fish. It has taken Moat as a laboratory at least 10 years to ramp up to where we are now. Uh, we moved to this location in 2001 and had the first fish stocked out here in 2002 uh, and it's taken us from 02 till now uh, to grow these fish up. These are a slow growing, slow maturing species. Uh, it takes us a minimum of seven years to, well, five to seven years to uh, mature a female uh, to get up to uh, caviar uh, bearing size. Every fish in this tank is a female. We, we determine that by ultrasound and some of the fish that have tags that indicates that their ovaries are starting to mature and starting to uh, form eggs. Uh, our Siberian caviar has a, uh, uh, a very mild uh, flavor. It has nutty overtones. Uh, it's a nice firm uh, egg, uh, just is a very enjoyable product. There has been a, a growth in, in caviar demand over the years, particularly as more and more people become affluent. Yeah, so this, this has created more and more of a fishing pressure on what's left of those wild stocks. It has not turned the corner yet. There's still a lot of concern that some of these uh, wild stocks may go extinct. Uh, but there's a lot of effort being put into turning that around and, and again the only way it's going to turn around is with more and more farm raised production. We're, we're writing the book. This is, not, this is not what you would consider cookbook aquaculture where you can open the pages and see what you should be doing on this particular day. We're writing the book here so every day is a new adventure for us. It's a lot of fun. Not as many people recognize the fact that the meat that is produced by this fish is also a very high quality white tablecloth meat. It's a mild flavored meat. It is a white, relatively flaky meat that, that holds up very well to many different preparations. The chefs love it because you can bake it, you can boil it, you can poach it, you can fry it, you can steak it, you name it. You can do it with this fish and come out with a very nice, uh, pleasant um, uh, meal dish uh, that uh, their patrons uh, very much appreciate. And all we have to do is finish off with a little sturgeon caviar. And we're gonna go right next to the yolk. So there you are. There's the rye smoked sturgeon salad. So you've seen the sturgeon come in from when it was a whole fish to being broken down, to being cured, and then to being rinsed, smoked, sliced, and it all ends up here for you to enjoy.